Hello and welcome back to It's All Good. I'm your host Latavia and it's a new week, a new episode and I just want to start by saying I am grateful for this warm weather or the little sneak peek of warm weather that we had this past weekend. I really enjoyed it. I went out, rode my bike, it felt good just to be outside with a mask, but it was still just nice to be out. Uh, and although it was short lived because <laughs> as I speak, it is raining outside. Um, it at least it is still, it's staying lighter a little longer. Daylight savings time is here. And so I take comfort in knowing spring is on its way. So I'm focusing on that. I'm grateful for the brief warm weather that we had and like I said, hoping it will be here to stay sooner rather than later uh, but as i was out riding um i was using my helmet and initially i had my hair pulled until ponytail and it was like wait that's not gonna work with um with the helmet and so had to pull my hair down and it was just kind of like as i was doing it it was a thought like mm, problems i never thought i'd have or didn't used to have which uh kind of got me to thinking about just my hair journey um because it has legit been a journey uh, if you talk about pro trusting the process uh what you see right now although i am it's time for some some a little touch up tlc but this uh my hair today is a tangible <laughs> tangible proof of trusting the process um because like i said my journey uh which essentially like i said thinking about that made me like oh i want to spend some time to share with you all uh my hair journey because i am certain that we all have our own story our own journey with hair um i think everyone definitely uh black women black women um and like i said i know men have it too but just when I think back over the years of the different types of hairstyles I've had, and I want to say, if you can think of it, I probably had it um, or something close to it. So uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy this little trip down memory lane with me, if you will, um, of my hair journey. And so the earliest memory I have um outside of pictures like I can look at pictures I will say my parents did a good job of taking pictures when I was younger just kind of over over the years and of course now we have our lovely digital scrapbooks um with social media all the various forms but aside from looking at pictures like I know my baby pictures or even just when I was like one or two it, it wasn't a whole lot of hair didn't start off with much, but there was enough to be able to pull, you know, just a little piece into a little barrette. So I definitely had a little barrette in the middle or like two or three on the side was not the baby with all the hair. That was not me. Um, and then, um, like I said, pictures up until about maybe four, I remember seeing, like I said, some kind of three, four parts or three, four different little, um, sections with barrettes on them uh, my sister and I had similar things when we were younger but I remember I had to have been four or five my first memory is having a curl now they swore to me it was not a jerry curl but it was a kitty curl and if when I remember seeing uh coming to America the first time being like oh I my hair's like theirs um, cause whenever, uh, Daryl finally remembered his name, if you listen to the last episode, um, but Daryl and his family, you know, the Soul Glow family franchise, and every time they got up, they left that little wet spot on the back of chairs. Mine wasn't as bad, but I did have times where I would have that little wet spot from my kitty curl, cause they said it wasn't a jerry curl, but I remember having that and just being like, why? not really understanding because my sister didn't have one no other kids that i could tell had one 
But here I was walking around at five with a curl. And I remember my mom would always pull a little piece in the middle and put a barrette on it. <laughs> Cause once again, it wasn't a whole lot of hair, but you know, she worked with what she had. And I remember taking my school pictures in kindergarten with that, just not really feeling that too great about it, but it happened. And I remember <laughs> when while having this um when i was younger we used to spend summers in south carolina with both of my grandparents but specifically um with my grandma in south carolina and so you know spending time with cousins i remember swv was big then so my sister and one of my cousins we had called ourselves cousins with voices um so we would just kind of sing different songs and then we made up a song that was pretty much about me and my hair because with this curl came products that you had to use to maintain it so that it stayed moisturized. Um, and I remember Activator Moisturizer 911. So whatever, I don't know what the 911 did, but that was one of the products that I had to use. So we came up with a, a little song and then it was like Activator Moisturizer 911. I can laugh about it now and I feel like I laughed a little but there was definitely like a part of me that just was like but why me why am I so different why do I have a curl and nobody else does because there were different products that I had to use um to maintain this curl that my sister friends and like my other my cousins didn't have to um there was I guess a little familiarity because at the time my mom had a curl um, and some of my other, like the older family members had a curl. So it just seemed like something that adults had. And I had this adult hairstyle at five and six. Um, so <laughs> made it through that. Then I remember, I guess I had to have been like somewhere between five and six that they attempted a perm or something. Because at that time, if your hair wasn't silky, you know, the soft silky curls, it was considered okay. difficult are not so great um so i remember there being a an attempt for me to get a perm it didn't go so well and i just remember always thinking that my hair was difficult or it wasn't easy to manage uh and so then i started getting braids um they'd be like cornrows or uh with the beads because i remember when i was six or seven when we moved to Turkey. So I remember that majority of the time we were there cause we're in another country, don't know a lot, you know, didn't know anybody save for the people that my parents met either from, you know, the church we attended or my dad's coworkers or just other people stationed there. So there was somebody that they met who for that two year period, almost exclusively with the, you know, save for the time of taking them out, washing, getting them redone it was in my hair was in braids in some type of cornrow or box braid style um when it was cornrows it was beads so I like I said you can think of it I had it also during that time I know Brandy came out and she wore braids and then kind of fast forwarding you know a few years in kind of throughout elementary school Moesha came out she always had braids it was always cute, the little small, tiny ones, even thinking back to like living single, Sinclair had micro braids, didn't know what they were called then, but I just remember wearing a lot. My hair was always in braids. Um, most, most of elementary school, well into high school. Um, so a lot of different braid styles did not, I was getting, I want to say by the time sometimes towards the end of us being in Turkey, which was like 95, 96, I feel like I had gotten a relaxer. If it wasn't there, then it was definitely when we got back to the States. So by like fourth grade, for sure, I had gotten a relaxer and was getting them. By that time, my mom, for the most part, was still doing my hair, but I had started doing a little bit in terms of just kind of using grease to moisturize it. And if anybody, was doing hair doing your own hair anybody's hair late 90s i feel like you know about blue magic blue magic was my friend and looking back i was using way too much because my hair did not move um and i'm so grateful that that phase has moved has uh we've gotten past that phase of 
thinking that black women's hair just wasn't it wasn't supposed to move it was supposed to be stiff um but in, i'm getting ahead so like i said braids um most of the time in turkey so like seven to nine was primarily braids then we came to north carolina and at that point going to a beautician was not like a regular thing for my sister and i my mom went and then she would do our hair uh, when we started getting relaxers then it was when it was time for a relaxer went to the salon to get my hair done and then in between she would do it or it would be in braids kind of that maintenance and then as i got i want to say like around fifth or sixth grade somewhere between then that's when i started doing it more myself um like i said using the blue magic pink moisturizer um if I was trying to try you know if i was trying to be fancy trying to do some kind of updo would use that uh pump it up spritz whatever and rollers mm. rollers the little sponge rollers i had a very i'm gonna just say it wasn't even love hate it was just i didn't like them but they were necessary because it was especially as it got closer to the time for needing a relaxer it was like yeah no wasn't much getting a comb through it was it was thick it was coarse i definitely have 4c hair it's more coarse didn't understand all that stuff then but i always wore a bang because growing up that was just my mom was like you need a bang so well into high school if my hair was not in braids and it was out i had some kind of bang to cover this here forehead that i was not quite comfortable with yet um so i just always felt like i needed to have it um so putting rollers in and if any of you all ever use those sponge rollers you if you were not careful about where you closed it <laughs> the little bar part where you closed it to secure the roller in your hair would always leave that nice little pretty defined line so i often <laughs> would have uh my hair be out you know have a little curl or the roll part in the back and the front the bang but my bang always had that just that line that indentation because uh, I just couldn't seem to figure out a way to do it without it so that was a, a struggle in and of itself um, trying to manage that and maneuver it and I want to say by the time I got to sixth grade this was like 98 99 like wearing a ponytail like doing twists in the front and the back out um or pulling it up you know twist in the front pulling it up in a ponytail so i learned or taught myself how to put a ponytail in so i was rocking that for a long time um i used to always want to be able to do the little high ponytail with the fan never quite had enough to bring that fan part so it just looked more like a rabbit tail at the top but we made it through um and like i said this is all in between me having different braid hair braided hairstyles so whether it was some cornrows or box braids some version of box braids that was always a factor um then i want to say kind of fast forward to seventh grade we were in delaware still getting rela relaxers had become more of a norm um so if it was out you know it would be kind of that's a wrap side part under um which i still kind of do but a wrap or i got crimps uh, when it came time for special events especially once i got into high school it would be a uh, finger i've had finger waves um not, not like a full head of finger waves would be like where you have kind of two or three different things going on in a hairstyle I had that, the French roll, uh, you know, some kind of updo with a ponytail because if it was homecoming, a special event at church, or when it came time for prom, it was always some type of updo because that was formal hair. Uh, so like I said, it was always, and then as I, in high school, I was definitely doing it more. So a lot of my go-tos were doing a wrap, rolling it, doing a flat twists or twist out set um braids in between i especially because i played basketball 
and volleyball. So majority of the school year, my hair was braided up because it was just easier to manage with me. You know, I was practicing or playing six days a week. So trying to maintain my hair in between all of that with all the sweating, it was just too much. So a good six to seven months out of every year, my hair was in braids because it was just easier to manage. Um, and that was pretty much the case through high school. My senior year, um, I don't remember what, it was some, I forget the name of it, but it was some new hair system that was supposed to help. It wasn't a relaxer, it wasn't a texturizer, but it was something that was supposed to soften, soften or loosen your curl pattern, make your hair more manageable. So like my junior year that summer had a, my hair grew, was doing really well. And then my mom and I found out of this like, oh, let's try it. Tried it and yeah, my hair was like, you tried it because it broke off. Uh, like, I don't even know how to really explain it, but it was like ridiculous from the way my hair looked the beginning of the school year to when it came time close to graduation my hair had pretty much all broken off and it just it was in like the middle had broken off the back it was just all uneven and so I think sew-ins had started to become a bit more normal at that point but it was still kind of one of those things of you didn't really tell people you had one but I remember I got my first one my like towards the end of my senior year of high school because I remember things just like well the beginning of the year my hair looked one way and when it's time for pictures and graduation I wanted it to look as close to that as possible and so there was a lady at our church who was also a cosmetologist that uh, my mom had been going to and so felt comfortable with me going and so I went got a sew in it was a very weird feeling um because this is the first time you know I'd had hair added as in terms of braids but just a sew-in was like a big thing um but I was happy that my hair was you know at least similar you know it was a little longer I could do more with it and then going into college I started getting sew-ins a bit more but I remember it was around the time that uh India Ari's I am not I am not my hair came out and I'd always had this thought or this desire to be natural because I would see movies or different pictures and just like, oh, I want to fro or I want to do different things, but didn't know how. Also knew it was a lot less. It was probably not going to be realistic while I was still living in my parents' house because it just they it wasn't going to happen. Um, so it was always something. But I want to say the it was like the summer between uh high school and going to college i did get a sew-in and it was like braids cornrows in the front into the sew-in was like some curly hair i didn't anticipate it looking like a fro but when it was done the way the hair was it did look like i had like a small afro it's just like a big not big but just a small um the curls were really tight so it almost looked like a fro because i remember one of my friends at the time saying oh okay i am not my hair and then at the at the time I was just like that's not what I was going for so still wasn't comfortable with the idea of being natural so even then it kind of I felt a little self-conscious or insecure about it um and so going into college don't know you know going into a new area don't know what's what so I want to say when I got when I started school it was either braid yeah I had a uh, kinky twist I had gotten it braided because it's like okay I don't know where I can go to get my hair done I'll be up here I don't know how often I'll be coming home so let me get something that I know I can manage without any issues so throughout college like I said it was a lot of it was braids then I want to say that's when I, I when I got to college I learned about you know Dominican blowout or blowouts in general and the fact that oh I can get my hair blown out and it does move. It doesn't have to be stiff, whether I have a relaxer or not. Um, Cause I had a lot of friends who are from New York and they were telling me RT when they get their hair done. So I started going with some of them and it's like, oh, my hair can move. Still wasn't that long, but it was just like learning as I'm 
you know, kind of spreading my wings, so to speak, out of the house, learning more about myself as well as my hair. Uh, and I knew it, I would say I, I'm pretty sure I was aware of it in high, in, in middle school, high school, but in college, definitely just becoming much more aware of how much kind of acknowledging how much of my hair was a part of my identity um, and how it was tied to the way I saw myself, my self-esteem. Um, Cause like I said, growing up, it was never very long. It was often my hair was thicker or coarser than, than my sisters, than what, what appeared to be my mom's and just those people around me. So it was, it wasn't the good hair and I didn't always feel good about it. Um, and so that was another reason why I was, I wanted braids partly because like I said, I liked the way they looked and the versatility, being able to do different things. It was much more manageable, but it was also, okay, well with braids, my hair can be longer and I don't have to deal with this. I can do a ponytail or I can do different styles because the braids are longer and I can't do these things with my hair. Um, so it's just like throughout college, I tried going, I did give going natural a try, um, probably my sophomore year because I found someone who could do my hair where she would, I would get it blown out without, you know, no relaxer and it was straight. It would last, um, made the mistake of trying to maintain that for a summer living in North Carolina which if you've ever been, you know, summer is ridiculous and the humidity is on a whole nother level. So trying to keep it straight that summer was, and I was working, I worked at Carowinds, which if you've never heard of, it's, it's an amusement park, big mistake. So by the time I got through that summer, it was like, nope, relaxer, please, please and thank you. Put the creamy crack back in my head. We weren't calling it that then, but it was just, let me get this relaxer back because this is not, being natural is not manageable. I just, I can't do it. Um, so I think I got one, but then I remember um, kind of was maintaining them. Wasn't getting them that often because I'm at school, didn't have a whole lot of money, just be going to pay for that. So I would do it myself or one of my friends would blow dry for me. Um, then I remember the summer, summer after my junior year, I had an internship and it's like, oh, I'm going to be working in this, you know, corporate world. I need my hair to look that way because once again, at this time, still not comfortable with the idea of wearing my natural hair and in the field I was in or profession I wanted to go into, straight hair was still deemed, you know, professional or more acceptable. So I remember before I started, I was like, well, I need, I wanted to get a sew-in that was kind of this bob. Um, so that way I could, it would be easier to maintain it because I'd be in New York for the summer. So I remember it was like, well, for this style to really work, I need to get a relaxer. So that way it's the hair blends because I don't want to have, you know, curly with kinky hair on top of some straight hair because that's just, that's just not hot at all. And I always been like, okay, even if it's not my hair, I want it to look like it could have grown from my scalp. So got another relaxer, get the style, loved that sew-in, was definitely one of my favorites by far. Do that the whole summer. And then it was, and then after that, oh, that's what it was. I got my hair cut at the end of that summer. I wanted a shortcut. So it's like, okay, for this to, man to be maintained, I need a relaxer. Then I took a swimming class and ended up getting braids. So it was kind of like defeated the point. So pretty much throughout college, it was, Mostly it was relaxer braids or different styles that I would try um, and wear my hair straight. And it wasn't until, I would say, so the summer between undergrad law school, I was just kind of still experimenting um, with different things of my hair, getting sew-ins and just to, to make it easier, just so that it wasn't a lot of work to just for maintenance purposes still in my braids phase of like okay these braids work for me i'm going into school you know i'm going to another new environment until i know what's what went back to my place in philly got my hair braided it was like good I, we're good to go this will last me at least like a month or two before and then that gives me time to figure out what i'm gonna do so 
most of my first year of law school, which this is now 2009 and the 2010 braids majority of that year. Cause like I said, it, there was some comfort in it. It was easier to maintain. It was familiar. It gave me some length. Um, and just, I just felt better that way. And so it was during my first year of law school, I started experimenting again. You know, I was like, okay, I really want to be natural. I started, I taught myself how to, to do a sew-in. So I started doing sew-ins, my own sew-ins, um, but I was doing more curly hair or wavy hair because I wasn't getting relaxers as often. Um, and so I remember <laughs> I had gotten my hair cut or something and my friend had come down for spring break and she was natural and it was like, I want to do it, but I'm afraid. I don't know what it's going to look like. So I remember I had like my little teeny weeny fro, didn't know anything really about how to maintain it. So it, it was dry and in hindsight looked really rough, but I remember I went I was, yeah, I went home to see my parents. I didn't tell them anything. And when I got there, they were just like, uh, what, what's going on there? Everything all right? Like, what's going on with your hair? Why does it look like that? And that was definitely, a, it hurt because it's just like, okay, I'm trying something different. I know it's not your preference. So the way they were, you know, their reception of it was, it hurt. I understood, or I say now I understand where they're coming from. It was different. They weren't used to it. My parents are from the South. Um, so hair and how it looked, you know, image, and they have an idea of what's acceptable, what's presentable, all of those different things. Um, so it was, it was like, uh, okay, well, yeah, they don't approve. So didn't try wearing my hair out for a long, for a while after that. But uh, the following school year, I was working in res life at the, at, the, um, at the school and I was helping run a residence hall. And so I had a staff. Um, so one of two of my RAs, I remember Crystal and Tara, they were they were natural, wore their hair natural in different natural styles. Always beautiful. I loved it. And I remember just kind of over the course of us doing training and throughout that fall semester talking to them I'm like yeah I am natural but I don't ever wear my hair out in its natural state I don't you know I don't know much anything so YouTube University watching videos talking to them and then them helping me I remember it was maybe maybe by like September of that year I had started actually wearing my hair out um and trying different styles and getting more it was it was a struggle <laughs> and when I look back at pictures it's just like oh yeah you was you was trying but you wasn't there yet so but they definitely played a big part in me getting more comfortable in wearing my hair out learning you know kind of that trial and error process of try this product you know this worked for you let me see if it works for me I had I already liked going to the beauty supply store at that point but it was a whole different level I had all different types of products kinky curly miss jessie's carol's daughter uh jamaican mango and lime can too i was i had a little bit of everything under my sink because i was going through that trial and error process of um if i want to wear a wash and go what works to, to, to define my curl pattern or if i want to do two strand twist or twist out what works um some things worked better than others <laughs> Uh, what kind of edge control works for my hair and which ones are just like grease because my hair does not respect edge control not at all um so like I said throughout law school it was definitely that kind of back and forth of but I will say getting to the point of where I was natural wearing my hair out being comfortable in it it was there was a new freedom in it um because it just, it was liberating. There was a different confidence that I had about, okay, yes, my hair, my hair is an accessory. It doesn't identify me. It's an accessory. It's a part. And regardless of the length, the texture, you know, it's my, I am not my hair. Like that song really became real for me at that time. 
Um, and so just that, I would say from 2010 through 2016, when I got my um, sister locks, it was just kind of a continual evolving and growing and becoming more comfortable in my skin and who I am, as well as my hair. And with that freedom, I tried a lot of different styles. I remember one of my classmates, he's like, you change your hair more than I change my socks. And initially it was kind of like, I mean, but do I, is that a bad thing? But then it was like, hey, it's my hair. It can do multiple things. It is versatile. So I am going to do and try as many things as I want. Um, and so in that period, I would still get sew-ins because one of my friends in law school, she was, she did hair or did really, she was really good, not a, you know, wasn't doing hair officially, but she was really good at it. So she would do sew-ins for me. I would do some myself. Um, still, you know, like I said, I learned how to braid my hair and others. So adding braid uh, in terms of box braids or cornrows. So just, it was, it also became a form of a stress relief in the midst of law school of on the weekends, have my wash day, do, you know, what style am I going to do? Let me look at this video, learn how to do this. And, uh, just trying different things became therapeutic in a sense of okay i need a break from the studying and trying to understand things and so just being more comfortable in who i am or who i was at the time i did i want to say right towards the end of law school like the beginning of my third year getting remember getting frustrated and i tried a texturizer and it did not do what I thought it was going to do. Thankfully, it didn't um, It didn't ruin my curl pattern, but it definitely, my hair just became limp. It didn't have much life anymore. So uh, I think it was probably after graduating from law school, I ended up having to get my ends trimmed or get my hair cut and essentially starting over yet again because one of the things that I didn't mention was throughout this whole process, it would be my hair would grow, it'd be doing well. And then for some unexplainable reason, or what I would say, this is kind of what led to me just going natural completely was when I was getting relaxers or even just getting it blown out. It was just like, I could never really explain it. But after a certain amount of time, my hair would break off and specifically you can't see it now or tell now but the back part of either the middle like my crown or the back middle part of my hair it would break off in the back and I remember one time a stylist was a cosmetologist was just like yeah what happened I I, I don't know it looked kind of like a weird M it was bad um so like I said this happened kind of throughout college um and so by the time I got to law school, and at that point, I'm 22, 23, I was just over it. So I was like, okay, something's got to give. And I just, I think I kind of went, I guess, so quote unquote, cold turkey. I didn't really have a plan um, in terms of how I was going to go natural. It was just, okay, I'm not getting relaxers anymore because this is clearly not working for me and my hair. And so the plan, I guess, initially was just, I'll do sew-ins, I'll do braids, um, I'm gonna figure something out. And, you know, would go two to three times a year to get it um, washed, blow dried, or, you know, got blow out, get my ends trimmed. I was still trying to do some things in terms of maintenance. And then, like I said, in 2010, that's when I started wearing it out in its natural state and just different natural styles mixing in with braids or sew-ins because uh as i mentioned i was in law school doing my hair was not always the forefront but ebbs and flows just different times so trying different things once again just becoming more comfortable with my hair as an accessory and not being defined by my hair or what it looked like just having more freedom um, I went through that phase of when I initially went natural because people said, oh, well, if your hair is real short and you don't have, you need to have big earrings, you need to do makeup. So I was doing all types of experimentation because even once again, looking back at pictures in terms of makeup choices, eyeshadow, mm, thank God for growth. Uh, but like I said, just 
a lot of different things. Um, and even after law school, kind of getting started in my career, because at that point, like I said, I'm natural, but anytime I would, as it got towards the end and preparing for interviews, oh, yeah, need to make sure my hair's straight. Because dude just had that thought of, oh, in this profession, you want to make sure you look professional and braids or uh, natural hair. You don't want to be nappy. That's just not professional. So a lot of times I would go and get it straightened before an interview um, for pictures even for graduation, I remember it was like, oh, I need to get my hair pressed out, you know, pressed. So for graduation, because it was like I was comfortable, but still not completely comfortable in all settings. So that still took some time. It wasn't until I was kind of in my career working where I was wearing my hair in its natural state. Um, if it was something, uh, if I had to go to court, I would do kind of to the flat twist kind of a crown perimeter uh flat twist around my hair so it's you know it's it's neat it's presentable uh because understanding because at the time I was in North Carolina and knowing that I was going to court in different counties and every county is created differently uh and there's some you know to even where I just knew because I didn't want any issues I wouldn't wear pants I would wear a you know either a skirt suit or a dress with a blazer so making sure my hair so these are just all different things that i am taking into account aside from the fact that let me make sure i'm prepared for court so that i can represent my client uh, and be successful in that sense it's just these are other things that as a woman and not just women but specifically like i said as a woman that going into court of is this a county where if i don't have if i do have a dress and i don't have stockings is that gonna be an issue it should not but the fact of the matter is at that time and even to this day in some places that is a thing it's it's something to consider of just no it's not required but if you know that a judge is a certain way it's just easier for yourself and everyone else let me just make sure i dress the part so to speak um but i don't go to court anymore so i don't have to deal with that but moving on i like i said so just kind of until 2016 it was a combination of me wearing my hair out in a fro and a twist out braids sew-ins um i started doing crochet you know i taught myself how to crochet hair so doing that and i got away from wearing straight hair because it just was like mm, i don't like it even if it's not mine i just wanted to look more like my natural my natural curl pattern so when i would do a sew in it was just like one go-to style i had of like it was wet and wavy so <laughs> you put it in a straight but when you wet it it curls up and i would just always wear it in its curled state um that as well as uh, like I said, crochet braids became my go-to because I decided probably 2012, 2013 that I wanted sister locks because one of my friends in school had them or a couple people had started getting them. And I remember before getting to school, I had seen pictures and was like, oh, I want that. But I thought they were a type of braid. I just didn't know what they were called. Um, so it wasn't until, like I said, my friend in law school, she got them. And I kind of watched her process because she got them during our first year. So kind of watched her hair grow like that process from a distance to where we got closer towards the end of school and started talking to her about it. So in 2013, I was like, I want them. I'm doing this. Started doing my research, talking to people, going and getting consultations, heard how much it was going to cost and was like, eh. I'm gonna have to wait and then it was also but it's permanent and I need to make before I make that kind of commitment yes you can you know you could comb them out it's not permanent permanent but it was for me it was I wanted to make sure this is something that I want to do because I don't want to get it and then change my mind I want to be committed to it and making sure so in my process of deciding and also trying to let my hair grow because it had somebody I let them trim my ends without blow drying it and she just basically was cutting so it looked like I was starting over yet again um like I said it I done been through some things with this hair but in the process as I meant if I'm if you remember earlier I mentioned the first time I tried wearing my hair out in my little fro and uh I went home to the parentals 
they were not pleased um so they still in this you know kind of between 2010 and 2016 natural hair still not their preference they were coming around to it as they saw me as i was getting better and doing it and i would say the craziest or biggest kind of transformation that i saw what not outside of myself was my mom because she was against wearing natural hair and at first it went from well, why don't you try this or why don't you do that why don't you get it straightened why don't you you know get the braids again to slowly when I would put a sew in it well why don't you wear your hair out it's so pretty you know like I when I had a fro or she started to appreciate it and it was kind of like you you want me to where did this come from but in the process of me trying to decide if when I wanted to get sister locks, I was talking to my mom about it and she ended up getting deciding she wanted them. And then she got them uh, like a year before I did. So I'm sitting over there like, wait, it's supposed to be what I do. And now you have it. And so she went through her own journey of that as well. Um, so it was like watching her get hers and kind of had the an, another opportunity to watch someone from a distance until finally I was just like okay I'm going to do it let me stop waiting so in April of 2016 I got my sister locks installed um which even that people just always want to see me cut my hair I spent the last three years you know growing my hair out because I didn't want I was trying to avoid that teeny weeny real awkward phase of getting sister locks but apparently God was like haha so much for your plans because the woman who installed them she said she was trimming my ends was not paying attention by the time I realized what she was doing she had just cut it was no trimming of ends um and she cut a good four to five inches off so by the time she finished which was like 14 15 hour day most people do installs in two days the person who did mine you know was like no let's just do it in one so on a sunday and like started at like six or seven she took all types of breaks we're not that's a whole nother story but um finally got them installed but when it was done i was happy but also I don't want to say mortified, but I was nervous and it was like, oh, it's short, like short, short. Like my hair has never been this short and <laughs> I got to go to work. Like it was a Sunday. So the next day is Monday. I didn't take any time off work. I wasn't prepared. And it's just, I'm looking in the mirror, just like, oh my God, oh my God, how am I going to do this? So I tried rolling it or a wet it and it was just like it's I'm sitting here trying to pull it, it wasn't it wasn't happening um so it was almost like start literally starting over emotionally in terms of I am not my hair my hair does not define me this is temporary this is a part of the process all of these things that I said the first time I looked in the mirror and then driving to work um just like oh my goodness oh my goodness what is it just and then it was okay it's here we can't change it because I remember somebody's like well you could put a wig on I'm like nope I didn't do this because I was gonna I wanted to wear wigs I did this because I wanted to start it and this, this is just all these internal conversations of I'm not gonna do a sew-in I'm not gonna wear a wig I know that you can but I don't care I'm gonna I'm gonna go through this I'm gonna trust this process and so it was the struggle of trying to figure out okay what do I do how can I add something to it like it's it's not getting any longer <laughs> it's just there I was wearing glasses it was just it was a struggle to say the least um and it was also for me one who like I said I did my own hair I was always trying different things, always changing. So one of my challenges to myself as well as in that process is because initially you're not supposed to really wash your hair, not do anything because you've got to give it time, your hair time to lock. Who, baby, not touching my hair, not doing anything, not styling it 
this struggle was real. Like that first year, it was like, so nothing. Sometimes I would literally just have to sit on my hands to not try to do anything. Um, in hindsight, I'm grateful because as you can see, it's not short anymore. Um, and April 10th of this year will be five years that I've had them. Um, and so even in this five year journey, um, this process of getting them, watching them actually, you know, form to become to where they were locked and then growing uh, to where, oh, they're here, let me not do anything. I don't know, I can't do anything. Um, I literally could just wake up and go, just kind of shake. Then as they started to grow, it's like, wait, uh, we okay maybe I can try a style and then for a while I was a little afraid to try anything so I'm like well not touching it has been going well for me but then it's just like okay it's still your hair you need to do things like get more comfortable um and so when I like I said looking in the camera looking in the mirror now every day it's even when I'm having moments of just like, hmm, I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm feeling anxious. It seems, in some respects, sometimes I feel like I'm being vain, but then it's just like when I look at my hair or I touch it, it's just like, this is a visible reminder that it's a process and you have to trust it, it takes time. Um, this is out and it's literally it's out of my control like there are you know there are things that i can do in terms of making sure i'm washing it and moisturizing it and keeping up with getting it retightened and doing the little things to take care of my hair um but overall whether my hair grows or not like there are things i can do to contribute to it um or hinder but most for overall it's out of my hands it's out of my control as are multiple things in life and so like I said going back to you when I was riding my bike and putting the helmet on it's just like little things of problems I never thought I'd have um because now it's oh I'm grateful that it's grown and it's long but oh I can't just go to sleep or I have to think about what I'm going to do with my hair because you know trying to sleep without a bonnet on it gets in the way or in the summer it was hot okay I gotta pull it up but even just simple things of when I was in um, high school, like I said, I played basketball. A lot of the white girls or people with longer hair were just, you know, the little messy bun, just pull it up. I could never do that short of having some braids in. And even then you had to make sure it was pulled up. <laughs> but it's like, oh, I can do that now. Just little things. Um, like I said, that for me, it's it's simple, but like so big for me and just thinking about all of the different adventures and things that I've had with and around my hair. And I literally just touched the surface with you all, um, having it colored and then it breaking off. Um, but all of that to say, like I said, this adulting thing, you know, like my hair, is a very small part of it but it has truly become like I said a tangible reminder a visible reminder daily that there are so many things out of my control the things you know there are small things that I can do that contribute or hinder my progress and so I need to you know it's my responsibility to do those things and maintain it but outside of that I just have to literally sit still or be still and let everything work out and even still sometimes you know let me sit on my hands you know you know whatever the equivalent of that is for you so thank you for <laughs> kind of taking this trip down memory lane with me as I share some of my hair journey or my story um would love to hear from you all about your stories your journeys just kind of some of those like, oh my God moments, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, would love to hear from you. And as always, even though it does not look like it or feel like it, remember that in the end, it's all working out for your good. Thanks for listening and until next time.